And welcome back to the show. The Connecticut real estate market is ideal for first-time home buyers. We're joined by a real estate broker, Vincent Diana, expert in the field. Well, good to see you. Yeah, great to see nice, you. Nice pocket square there. I like you. Dapper. Thank you. So, listen, you've been in the market for a long time. Is the worst over? Well, it looks like we've got a little more to go, but we're definitely out of the woods. We've uh, enjoyed really some good comeback the last two years. The last two years for real estate has been very, very strong, where the market's increased about 16% overall. Okay, where? Uh, throughout Connecticut, throughout New England, uh, the, as a matter of fact, nationally, the prices increased from 2011. Uh, they went up 10% 2012 to 180,000, and this year they're projected to go up another 5%. So really, really looking good. And out of the eight counties in Connecticut and 169 towns, mm. uh, the majority of them have done very, very well. Even our uh, uh, days on the market, which has stayed about the same, it's been encouraging to see because we've had so much... Uh, you know, distressed sales, mm -hmm. short sales. They made up in 2011 about 29 percent of the market. As we that's came, huge, right? That compared to uh, the 10 one years third. Ago, one yeah. third. Ten years ago, where were we? Ten years ago, we were probably closer to I would say 10, 11. Uh, wow. No, maybe eight percent wow. or so, seven percent. But last year we were at. 22 percent, and then this year we're projected to be about 17 percent. All right, so largely you're seeing that the economy maybe is getting better based on the uh, short sale foreclosures. Uh, and, it's yes. an indication that things are starting to stabilize, Absolutely, right? very strong indication, and we see that all over. As a matter of fact, New England is the whole, uh, all of New England's done very well. Connecticut's probably bringing up the rear, but Maine's increased by 20 percent of their sales. Uh, Massachusetts increased by 20 percent. Rhode Island is mm -hmm. up 13 percent. Uh, you know, Vermont is uh, 12, and I think that New Hampshire is around 18 percent. So, what do you so think we're seeing is, is a good is it economy because it's a confidence game. You're the real estate. It, it is. It, There's a lot of buyer confidence out right. there, Stan. And what we're seeing is the rates being so low, the inventory coming down. There's you can afford more property uh, right. than what you could, you know, in 2007. So it's really it's a great trigger. Also, Stan, rents are on the rise. Right. Rents are going up very aggressively. Uh, so people are buying and renting property. For the first year since 2005, our investor rate has increased. Right. And, you know, we averted a lot with the fiscal cliff. You know, we had uh, the mortgage interest deduction. They were talking about getting rid of interest uh, uh, write-offs. And, you know, a lot of people rely on that. If you buy a property up to a million dollars, you can write off all the interest. Right. If they did away with that, the big fear was why, what incentive do people have to buy property? Uh, we also have uh, the Mortgage Debt Relief Act, which is very helpful. Um, that Let's was talk about that. that. That's where if you have a short sale, right, mm -hmm. you don't have to pay taxes on the loss yeah, of the... Yeah, and that uh, was what, proposed. I mean, think of this, Stan. You're right. in a situation where you owe $300,000 on a house that's right. only worth $250,000. Right. They were going to take that $50,000 to families who are already in a pretty tough situation and then tax them yeah, at their so. current tax rate by the IRS. So there's no escaping it. So you got hit twice, right? you, you, you got hit through the short sale, then through the taxes, right. so you can never get ahead. You're right on, yeah. And, I mean, that would have been devastating. That would have taken these families, and that would have pushed them into bankruptcy. All right. So, so it's important to know you're saying right now, then, with, with this short sale, there's no tax on what the loan forgiveness was. So if the house was right. 200000 and you sold it for one fifty dollars in a short sale, mm -hmm. they can't tax you on the fifty grand. That's a lot of, Correct. That's a lot of confusion about that still, yeah. and a very important thing to note. Yeah, now that right. will come back up 2000, uh, I'm sorry, uh, January of 2014. But for now, we're in good shape with right. it. And, you know, one of the uh, really, and we're lucky to have him, Attorney General George Jepson, he put a letter together, and it was signed by 40 other attorney uh, generals and uh, congressmen, and they said just that, that this just isn't a good way to do business. Right. And, you know, we're lucky to have a guy like that to fighting for us. Now, folks out there who want to buy or investors, you know, they say, you know what, yeah, the interest rates are very low, Vincent, but the confidence that my job is not high. And so why is it when confidence in the job market, sometimes when you have a job, you're not quite sure where it's going to go, interest rates are very low, but a lot of folks still feel, yeah, they have a job, but they're not quite sure how long it's going to be there, so they're reticent to uh, buy. Well, a lot of it is supply and demand. And as I said you know, earlier, the rental market, because it's increasing, people can buy a property for a lower rate than what it would rent cost to rent the property. So they're making the commitment. They're making the move. And, you know, we've been enjoying, as I say, two years of strong real estate. Well, Growth. I shouldn't mm -hmm. say strong growth, but, but You're trending. good growth. You're trending. And, it, we're trending. And it seems like we are getting out of our own way as far as the foreclosures are down, the distress sales are down, the bankruptcies are down. So, you know, we're, we're doing all right. What's the best way to recover from a short sale or a foreclosure? Well, 
person watching saying, gee, I did all the right things and I got a yeah. bad situation. How do I bounce back from that and get back in the game? There's a lot of banks that will help you. I mean, you call me and I can, you know, give a hand. What we do is we help people reestablish their credit. And it usually takes a good two to seven years, depending on the damage, to get people back on their feet. And some banks are more liberal than other banks. There are banks that are pretty conservative out there. And right. You know, that's also something to work with. So the with. key is finding out who will work with you, who understands the market. Okay, this person had a great rating. They had a little brush fire. They rated back into the business, but I want to work with them again. Right? Exactly. And let's face it, Stan, everybody comes across a speed bump now and then. So, and there are programs that we have out there that will help these people. And there's a lot of programs out for first-time buyers. You know, the, the pilot program, the hero program, uh, right. CHFA is at an all-time how, how low. How much down for the first-time buyers? I mean, there's 100 percent financing really? out they're, they're there. They're still doing yeah, that. Yeah, they're still I doing that. I thought they got in trouble for that last They're still doing that, huh? <laughs> well, you have to meet the criteria, right. and the good criteria credit. did get a little, a little more stringent. Yeah. But you know, with good reason. You know, I've been doing these short sales and foreclosures for, well, I've been in the business 27 years, so for a very long time. And what I've noticed is in the late 80s, you know, I've been through the bubbles and the bursts. When we did them, everybody had only a first mortgage. Mm. Uh, they had typically a lot of equity in the property. And now we're in a situation, so you could go to the bank, do the short sale, and still the bank would come out on top. Now people are up to their eyeballs. Right. They second have mortgage, second, no equity. third. I just sold one. I had four mortgages wow. on the property. Wow. We sold it for, you know, a little bit less than what I think his mortgages were. Four about mortgages on one property? The mortgages were about $555,000. Wow. We sold the property for just under $300,000. And, you know, that, that, that forgiveness really helped out this guy. About 20 seconds. Go through your forecast for the year. We have three quick bullet points and things to know about connected real estate. One, that short sales are decreasing. So yes. that's the sign, one, of confidence and that the economy is starting to maybe stabilize. And if mm -hmm. folks can take advantage, the rates are still low. Interest rates are very low, so folks who are eligible can take advantage for maybe even a 100% situation. That's right, right? Stan. And the rental market is high. Now, for the landlord, what does that mean when the market is high? What should they do if that landlord saying, okay, what do I hold, buy, sell? What does the landlord do? Landlords are picking up and keeping. They're yeah, holding. Holding right now. Definitely holding, yes. Okay. Absolutely. And it's a great time to do that. Yeah, because the rents are flushed, and they can absolutely they can kind of weather the storm. If they lost some money, they can kind of hold on because the rents coming in. That's right, Stan. Vincent Deanna, real estate expert. We Stan, appreciate. Stan, thank you so much. Got to have you out again. Yes, okay. sir. Great right. job. Good to have you on. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, folks. Thanks to our, our guest. Uh, we're going to come back with a third segment on relationships. Our provocative pastor, T.C. Brantley, joins us to talk about couples stuck.